Hey guys, one click install for stable video diffusion is here. And whether it's memes, your own photographs, images you created with stable diffusion, maybe with the QR control net models, or historical photographs, or your own animated short films with AI sound effects. You can bring them all to life now with stable video, and I'm gonna show you everything you need to know right now. Keep in mind that this is far from perfect and will possibly produce some things you wish you didn't have to see. First, we will install or update Pinocchio, which then allows us to install Stable Video Diffusion the easy way. Finally, we will look at the basics of using Stable Video, but to run this on your own machine, you need an NVIDIA graphics card and at least 10 GB of disk space for one model or 19 GB for being able to use two of the models. Whether you want to update your Pinocchio or install it from scratch, you need to head to this website and click on Download. Then click on Windows, and clicking on this button will lead you to the actual download which is a zip file that you need to extract and then run that file. You can ignore the warning from Windows, but you should only do that in cases where you trust the developer. Here you can change the theme if you want to before clicking on Save, and then you're done installing Pinocchio. In the Pinocchio UI, you only need to head to the Discovery tab and locate Stable Video Diffusion. Then you click on download twice. And then install, which depending on your internet speed may take a while, but at the end, it should say install success. Then you click done and start the tool. Click allow when this window pops up. Then you can either wait for the web browser to open the page automatically or you click on this URL to take you there immediately. When you open the tool, at first it always asks you to load the model. You can just leave the default model selected and click on load. The first time you select a model, it will be downloaded off the internet and they are all about 9GB in size each. You can monitor the progress in the Pinocchio status window. This is how the UI looks when it's done loading. Let's look at the most important components starting here on the left. This is where you can set the resolution of the video. And here you set the total amount of frames to be generated. And here's the seed. Over here, as you have already seen, is where you can select the model. I suggest you download these two models and don't bother with the other ones for now. Then there is the motion bucket ID. This controls how much motion there is in the video, more on that later. And down here are the frames per second. So if you set the total number of frames to 14 and the frames per second to 6, then you will get a video that is 2.3 seconds long. The other model defaults to 25 total frames, which means the clip will be 4 seconds. Here you can drag and drop your input image, which we'll do right now. And the first of the two images you see is the original input image, and the one below is a preview of the aspect ratio according to this resolution. And now the only thing you need to do is click on sample, and depending on the image itself, the settings, and your GPU, this will take a few seconds, or a few minutes. Then you can check out the separate images or the entire video that was generated and all the files will be saved in this location on your PC. Here are some examples that should make some of the functionality of the tool a bit more clear. First, if you only change the total number of frames and leave the rest of the settings unchanged, you will get a different video and not just a longer or shorter one, as you can see in this example. So this pretty much has the same effect as changing the seed has. Keep in mind that these models are trained for short videos, which is why you should stick to generating short videos too. Here's a comparison of the different models with the default settings and the most important thing to note here is that there's no difference between the actual models and the image decoder models, which is why you don't need to download them for now. 
Now, as you can see, I'm having issues with too much dramatic zooming in those clicks. So if you remember, we have the motion bucket ID that we can tweak. And here's a comparison of different motion bucket values from 0 to 255. What's interesting about this is that with 0, it does not have no motion at all, as you might expect. But it instead has exactly what I wanted, and that is the fire to move without any zooming. So as a summary, this is all very easy to use and everything you saw in the intro was done with the default settings. However, there's no way to do any prompting and the way to control the movement of the image is very limited. The models are trained for short clips and besides those limitations, this is just the beginning and hopefully soon there will be extensions and improvements that will make this even better. Maybe some of you realized it or knew it already, but this isn't my real voice. It's an AI voice. And if you're interested in how that's done, you can check out this video. And this video gives an overview of the QR control net models that let you make some cool images that can be used as input for stable video. And since I kept getting asked which hardware I'm using, I made a video about it, which might be useful to you if you think about upgrading your PC but you will find even more on my channel. For example, if you want to learn how I make the AI sound effects and music. I don't know about you, but I can't wait to see what everyone would be able to create with stable video. Thanks for your support and thanks to everyone that's contributing in the open source AI scene. If you learned something new, please like, share or subscribe and I'll see you next time.